Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my home. You know, it's been so cold lately and there's nothing better on a cold day than snuggling up next to the fire in your favorite chair with a good book. Well, nothing unless you also have a snuggly quilt. I think I have one right here. Ah, that's better. I'm just kidding. I would never mistake one of my quilted cutting boards for a real quilt. It's just so much better. I made this pinwheel quilt as part of my quilted cutting board series. If you've enjoyed my cutting board series, feel free to like or give me a comment and definitely take a moment to subscribe to the channel. And if you're ready to watch me make it, let's head to the shop. I started milling the lumber at the miter saw. For this project, I used 8 quarter sapili, 8 quarter paduk, 8 quarter maple, and 4 quarter walnut, which will be used for the border. After the miter saw, I headed to the jointer and then on to the planer to create boards that are S3S. Then I set my table saw to 45 degrees to cut each board for the pattern. For all the glue ups on this project, I use Type Bond 3 because it's waterproof and food safe. I applied glue to both surfaces, tightened up the clamps, and left them for 24 hours. For some of the boards I use clamping calls just to keep things aligned. I took the calls off after only 30 minutes. The next day I took the boards out of clamps and then used a scraper to remove any excess glue. At the table saw, I cut each board cleanly along the edge of the triangle.
repeated this on the other side of the triangle to get a square that is about two inches by two inches. Then using my crosscut sled, I cleaned up the ends of each board, put in a stop block, and cut the lengths needed for the three different edge grain boards that I'm going to make. This board is made up of three edge grain boards that are cut and then placed on end. Now it's time for the second glue up. This is where I'll create those three boards. Again, I applied liberal amounts of glue to the surfaces, placed the clamps, and left them for 24 hours. table saw, I cut the board needed to make the borders, and then using the crosscut sled, cut it to length. I glued up the edges of this board to make a panel that I will then cut to make edge grain. I left the board in clamps for 24 hours, and then removed it along with all the other pieces. So now you can see the three boards and the border together. I used a scraper to remove the excess glue and then ran the boards through the planer to make them all the same height. Then I headed back to the table saw. I placed a stop block and cut each of the boards to 1 and 5 eighths inches. see the pattern come together. Time for our third glue up. I applied little amounts of glue, tightened up the clamps, and left them for 24 hours. Before I could apply the border, I wanted to clean up the edge of the board. I just made this tapering jig and I thought I'd try it out at the miter saw. I think it worked pretty great. I applied the borders in two stages. Using the edge boards first, I applied liberal amounts of glue, placed them in the clamps, and left them for 24 hours. Then I headed back to the table saw to remove the excess border. Once things were all cleaned up, I applied the borders to the other side of the board. I applied more glue, clamped it up, and left it overnight. Now that the borders are applied, I can surface plane the board. Because this is an end grain board, I don't feel comfortable using my planer, so I use this jig that I made for my router. I'll use a flat bottomed bit, and I secure the board to the jig using a hot glue gun. Mm -hmm. 
I watched a CNC machine do this once and I noticed that it went around the entire edge of the board first, so that's what I do now. And it really seems to reduce the amount of tear out. Once the board is flattened, I'll go over the surface with 40 grit sandpaper using my random orbital sander. Then I'll head back to the table saw and cut off the excess border. And now it's time for the real work. I sanded this board with 80, 120, 180, 220, and 320 paper. I sanded the front and back as well as all of the edges. Do you ever feel like you're being watched in the shop? Between grits, I raise the grain with water. And now it's time to add the little details that make the board look perfect. I use a 1 8 inch round over bit and my router to round over all the edges, including the corners. I just think this makes a nice profile. And then I'll use this jig that I made for my router to add a handle to each end. I use a half inch round nose bit. Then it's more sanding. I'll hand sand the edges and the handles so that everything is smooth to the touch. I soak the board in food grade mineral oil for five minutes and then let it dry overnight before applying wood wax. I'll leave the wood wax on for at least three hours and then I'll buff it out. The finished product came out beautifully. I really like how these quilted cutting boards look. If you enjoyed this build, please take a minute to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time in the shop.